Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. This video is going to be the ultimate guide to nuclear silver load. It's going to be a lot shorter than the one hour version. And it's going to answer every single question you have about nuclear silver load from the creator of nuclear silver load himself. So by the bill of the day, today is the natty edition. So it's obviously going to be Megan. Uh, height 5758 on a good day. Weight 142 when I first started back here when I thought I was swole. All the way to 235 which was my heaviest that's when i stopped pretty much bodybuilding and started focusing on just being a dad and other stuff but as you can see i kept some of my gains and using the same format as last time everything starts with genetics my story on nucleus of low started off with the fact that i had shitty genetics going up as you can see here look at that head on megan look at the face right for you guys wonder where the puffy tricks came from right so i was destined to not put on size you know right this picture here that everyone knows right i post it almost every time Right, look at my arms here after two years of lifting. Right, this was when I was in college. And believe it or not, I actually thought I had muscles. I actually thought I was one of the biggest guys around. My friends would tell you that. Like, you couldn't tell me nothing. I thought I was actually sore after two years of lifting when really my genetics were ass, you know. And look at my face here. This is me next to my sister. And I'm blurring the face of a lot of people here because now people are having issues with their job, you know, looking for them online. And, you know, I'm, my channel is obviously not politically correct. So, but anyway. Started off with shitty genetics, combined with an obsession for muscle mass. I grew up worshiping people that had huge muscles. I just loved it, guys. Again, you, if you know me, you know Dragon Ball Z, Vegeta is my favorite character. You know, Broly, you know, uh, I grew up loving wrestling, The Rock, Goldberg. And obviously, when I was a kid, my idol was Arnold Schwarzenegger when it came to bodybuilding, right? Because I watched Conan, Terminator. So long story short, I had these genetics, but I wanted to look like this, right? So, remember... People that have the worst genetics work the hardest. Why? Because we got to do so much more just to be like everybody else. You know what I mean? Whereas I have friends that would just literally look at a jump rope and just fucking lose weight. Or they'll just, you know, look at weights and just get sore. So I had to look outside of the conventional methods. So here are the observations I made growing up. Observation number one, people that train the muscle every day had that muscle overdeveloped, period. Right. And I don't care if they were natty. I don't care if they were on the juice. In fact, I have over a hundred different examples of people on nucleus overload, people who did nucleus overload, obviously accidentally. Um, and only seven of them were bodybuilders who were on steroids. So I don't want to hear, oh, it's something for people on steroids. What about the other 90 percent? Right. So you have my uncle, you have uh, David and his lats, you have Matt and his drives, you have the girls who literally do squat every single day. Every day is booty day and they have these huge glutes you have uh, the story of milo right whether it's a legend or it's true you know he wasn't carrying that boat once a week right you have mechanics and then forearms you're gonna tell me every mechanic is on steroids or every mechanic genetically has strong forearms right you have marco and his traps you know you guys know the story of marco people that play rugby or football and they have to train traps almost every day um you have the muay thai story you have the sulfur um carrying motherfuckers all the way in asia who have some of the worst genetics in the world. Yeah, you have bodybuilders, natty bodybuilders in the front delts that are overdeveloped. You have people that play Muay Thai and are always kicking those fucking uh, bamboo trees and shit to strengthen their shins, right? You don't see their legs shrinking, even though the shin is a bone. You got the wheelbarrow motherfuckers. You got ballerina in the calves. You got the fisherman in Cameroon. You have myself. You have the people who live in mountainous regions that have huge calves. Or people that used to hike a lot. I know, I know at least one of you guys watching this video have a friend that used to hike a lot and has massive calves, right? So and that's just the natty stories, right? So I don't want to hear, oh, you know, uh, it's a steroids. And at the top, since we know that it has nothing to do with just uh, uh, having, you know, being on juice or not, you got bodybuilders, right? Is it a coincidence that the one bodybuilder, the only bodybuilder that I know of who did shrugs every single day when he was young has the biggest straps in bodybuilding history? Is it a coincidence that speed skaters and sprinters and track cyclists have these massive, well-developed quads? Is it a coincidence that Olympic weightlifters have these huge straps? Boxers have, to have that thick neck cause from doing neck almost every day. People in prison who do push-ups every day have big chests. Swimmers in the last gymnasts. And the fucking arms. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on. Guys, I have so many stories on this and I made so many videos on that, but people are still questioning it. So that was observation number one. But as a kid, I did not know why. You obviously have Frank McGrath who used to do forms every day. And again, just like Johnny Jackson, right? Once he got on the juice, once he became a bodybuilder, his forearms would not stop growing. Right. But anyway, so that was observation number one. And I didn't really know why at the time. I you know, I was I was young. I was wishing number two, they were doing a lot of time on the tension, right? So it was high reps, high volume. When I say high reps, 
a lot of them were just again carrying stuff or you know like the wheelbarrow guys were just doing pretty much farmer walks all day and got these huge traps without even you know asking for it right so there's a lot of weekly volume a lot of time on the tension right and no one really knew why right until i got older and i realized that there's a lot more to the story that was version number three long breaks you know they would take breaks over 90 percent of these stories for some reason they would take accidental breaks because remember that's not something they were actually trying to do to build muscle they were just doing that some of them were doing it to build muscle but some of them were just doing it because it's their job or their sport and obviously in every sport you know you take breaks whether you want it or not there's an off season uh, even if it's a job most jobs in the poor countries are seasonal so they would take long breaks then when they would come back not only they will gain the, the the muscle back which is obviously muscle memory we all know about muscle memory but you know they would constantly get bigger and bigger you know up to a point of course because they were not really you know training you know with bodybuilding Abstraction number four extreme sensitivity to growth after the break you know which is what i just explained right when they're when they came back or when they joined bodybuilding, the muscle came on so fast. Not just the muscle memory, obviously, because obviously that, that always takes place, but they grew past that sticking point. So I created a program, right? And you can see, guys, this video is on YouTube, guys. My very first video on Uncle Silver Lord was back when I, I think it was back in 2011, right? And I have it right here, July 17, 2011. And I made a video called Push Ups Every Morning, whatever. I was awkward as fuck. It was one of my very first videos on the channel. This is years ago, guys. I went back and tagged those videos so you guys could find them. And I explained, you know, every morning, just do push-ups, you know. Because, again, this is this was based on pure anecdotes. Back then, I didn't know a single thing about the, the science behind it. In fact, no one fucking knew. I just knew it worked. You know, my friends that were doing it, um, you know, my, uh, my African friends, we used to do the same body pose every single day. I made a ton of videos about those guys. Go check them out. So I created a program, and I said, guys, I don't know the science behind it, but the science will eventually catch up. My old subscribers know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Because they were there from day one. And I told them, pick a muscle, you know, uh, and the reason why I always say one muscle is for recovery purposes, right? So that, you, you know, you don't burn yourself out because um, most people struggle with recovery. Um, but obviously, if your recovery man management is great, you could do more than one muscle. The weight, I say light to moderate because, again, I was replicating what I saw growing up. You know, not, not all of these guys were using heavy weight. You know, ballerinas are not... Fucking, you know, they have big calves from just using their body weight, you know. People that do push-ups every day, you know, uh, like myself. You know, when I did the whole push-up every day experiment uh, as a kid to try to, you know, beat my friend in the back. So, light to moderate weight, and that was going to prevent injuries, help your recovery, and it was going to save time, right? And I told you, exercise, pick something simple, right? Cable, machine, dumbbell, body weight, again, once again, to prevent injury and, and, and to recover faster. Reps, skip it high, close to failure, but not completely, you know, to failure sets around five sets five minutes you know pretty much the list is here rest period very short the goal was to just maximize that pump get in get out done and i used to do that every morning for my chest and that was my recommendation um and, and of course you know the goal was do it for 30 days take a break one or two weeks off and all of these numbers that i was throwing out it was literally just me bro sciencing based off all the observations that i saw growing up Right, all the and then I would even ask my friends. We used to, you know, train the body parts every day. You know, just taking notes over and over again. Some of them are still here, you know. And eventually, the goal was, guys, when you return to training, you should see the same effect that all those guys, you know, experienced. And of course, there was a lot of criticism. You know, like, oh, that's overtraining. Oh, you know, high reps don't build muscle. Because remember, you understand, guys, back then, and anyone who's honest and who was in the fitness community back then will admit it. Back then, if you said anything about training more than once a week, you were laughed at. They were like, oh, that's overtraining. You don't know what you're talking about. You shouldn't train a muscle more than once a week. You got to do it on Monday and wait till the next Monday to hit it again, blah, blah, blah. So the so-called fitness experts were like, oh, these guys are talking out his ass. It's bullshit. And they were saying high reps don't build muscle. You got to go heavy. You know, you got to have weight on the bar. You know, it has to be fucking heavy. You got to fucking, you know, have PO every fucking day. All, right? All the BS that's been debunked now, but at the time, you know, every, everyone believed it because experts in court said so, you know. They're like, oh, I don't some people on steroids, even though literally 90% of the stories were natties, right? They're like, oh, it's only swelling, uh, you know, it's not going to, um, you know, last. A bunch of bullshit, right? But the one that pissed me off the most was they kept saying, oh, there's no science behind it. There's no science behind it. And I hate when people look at overwhelming evidence and still deny it because there's no study on it, right? So... I was like, fuck it, the results speak for themselves. I did it, and I literally picked, not only I had almost everyone do it on my channel, but I picked the people with the worst genetics. And you guys know me, you know, OG subs know who I'm talking about. Lazy line. Again, I got to cover everybody's faces with the whole LinkedIn bullshit. 
Um, but uh, lazy line, look at the transformation. All these pictures are taken from videos, right? I made sure I took them from videos so that you can go and watch the videos yourself. In case you think, oh, maybe it's Photoshop, maybe it's the wrong person. The videos are on my channel, guys, and the OG stars will point you right through them. All right? So you got lazy line, huge transformation. All this was just in a matter of months. You got Muhammad. You have um, my brother, who was skinny as hell at the bottom here. Right? He just wanted to uh, bring up his shoulder and his triceps. He wanted to copy me on that pause. Right? So every single person who tried nuclear civil law got results. Right? Look how flat my traps were on the left side, and they finally came up. And in fact, I was doing rack pulls every day when I discovered that rack pulls were the shit for traps. And obviously until I snapped my shit up, and that's why I keep telling people do not do nucleus of load on heavy movements. You know, eventually you're gonna injure yourself, especially if you're stubborn like me. But that's a whole different video. Um, but yeah, every body part, my arms, my my you know, my back thickness, my lat width, everything that I couldn't grow after years of lifting blew up when I started doing nucleus of load and you get full body workout, combining all that stuff, you know, HSP, bone density, you know, the whole nine yard. But I had to find that science, right? Because people were still saying, well, you know, despite all the proof, all the evidence, you know, people were still saying, oh, oh there's no science behind it. So I, I started digging. Keep in mind at the time, my major uh, was uh, business. You know, I have three, I was doing three associates, right? In business administration, general studies and liberal arts. And then eventually I graduated and went on to do, you know, uh, two bachelors, one in finance, one in management. So bodybuilding, building muscle was not my major. That was just my passion. That's what I keep telling you guys. When somebody's passionate about something I, I would come home and i would literally skip my homework on business or whatever and i would just study hypertrophy all night you know i was i would look at animals i would look at you know i like thinking outside the box right i didn't want to you know learn hypertrophy by reading fucking articles that's bullshit because everyone is always trying to sell you some bullshit supplement or some bullshit program so i went outside of the box i, I looked at cancer research oncology i looked at animals I looked at myostatin, and eventually I started literally studying biology, anatomy, kinesiology, uh, chemistry, physics, biochemistry. I even went to neuroscience at one point, and Matt was helping me with that, you know, too, because uh, that was his major. I studied military history to see how they were training their warriors, uh, endocrinology, biochemistry. My supervisor at the time couldn't stand me because every morning she was a biology professor, and every single morning I would go to her and just pick her brain and ask her a million questions about hypertrophy, you know. And eventually it paid off, right? Finding the science behind it. And that was one of the happiest days of my life. I made a video about that. That's when I found a study, right? Monoclear acquired by overload exercise preceded hypertrophy and I'm not lost in the training. Long story short, it took a group of rats. And again, it's funny because I found a study and I made a video about it the very same day. I was so freaking excited. You can still find that video on YouTube. And there goes the date, December 2013. And you can see... You know, I literally drew everything on the board. I give you guys the link to the study. I said, go check it out. And people are acting like this study is new, like they just found it or some shit. I've been, I've been talking about the study for years. I've mentioned it in almost every video. But anyway, so they find out that the, that uh, if you take a rat and then you pretty much uh, break one of its legs to make the other leg work harder, eventually, not only the muscle grows, but the nuclei within the muscle accumulates. Again, I'm not going to go into too many details because I'm pretty much repeating myself in another video. But here were the key highlights. New myonuclei are added before any major increase in size, right? Don't overload. And when they say overload, guys, they're talking about weight here. They're not talking about overload as in, when I say nucleus overload, I'm going to explain that later. It's two completely different things. Here, they're just talking about weight. You know, scientists like to use the term overload when they're referring to just excessive weight. So anyway, so pretty much they were explaining the concept of muscle memory and how muscle memory works. And I was so excited because that literally explained every single thing. I just get bro sciencing about this whole time. So I made a video about that. I was super, super excited. And then from then on, the, the research just took off. Because from once you find a good study, it's very, very easy to just snowball into finding more and more and more. And eventually, I was able to back up every single claim I made about nucleus overload. Right? More growth needs more nuclei. I found this study that was actually done in 2008. Long story short, they're pretty much saying, for you to get bigger, Right. Once you make it past your your noob gains, you need to add nuclei. Right. And I've been beating a dead horse over that over and over again for for muscle to continue to get big. It needs more nuclei. And how do you get those nuclei? Boom. Several studies showed nuclei gains without heavy weights or excessive muscle damage. Because remember, for, people kept saying, oh, do you not lifting heavy enough when you tell people to do high rep studies after studies after studies have shown that whether the person is trained, untrained, male, female, doesn't matter. As long as you're training hard, meaning you know close to failure, or blood flow restriction training, which is pretty much pump training, um, 
you are going to get a crazy increase in satellite cells. In fact, occlusion training, which is you know pretty much pump training on crack, and I've been recommending it for so many fucking years, actually gives you more satellite cells than regular heavy training with minimum damage. In fact, occlusion training, katsu, right, is the only method of training that actually has the least muscle damage out of all other training techniques. So if I want to say, oh, you got to go super heavy, you got to kill yourself in the gym in order to get fucking bullshit, right? And I've been telling you guys that for so fucking long. And there are so many studies to back this up. Look them up, guys. And that explained why I was able to build my chest. And my old subscribers remember that, you know, like my chest was overpowered my physique when I started bodybuilding. And everyone thought, oh, maybe it's just good genetics. Wrong. They forget that I was doing push-ups every single day. And I explained why I was doing push-ups every single day. But anyway, mTOR reset. Right, study backed that up, showing that again, look, antibiotic signaling becomes less sensitive to resistance exercise, but is restored after a short training period. So I was the first one, and you can find those videos online, to combine every single thing about, you know, training every day and um, uh, the satellite cell response with the mTOR study to pretty much back up nucleus overload. And it literally felt like I was a time traveler because a lot of these, for example, this study came out in 2013. Right? And that's like we're telling you guys, just by observation, you will notice things that the science will catch on later and later and later. Some studies we found were actually released a lot earlier, but a lot more came afterwards. So finally, I had to name the program. So first, I used to just call it Training Every Day, right? And obviously, that's not a name, right? Because there's a lot of different training methods where you're training a monster every day. Um, next, I was like, all right, because everyone kept calling overtraining because they were like, oh, you're just overtraining your muscle. You're not going to recover, blah, 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 blah. So I was using the name overtraining with quotes. You know, it was, it, was, it was sarcasm. It was like, all right, well, you know, that was my way of saying, well, if you guys think, you know, that that's overtraining, then overtraining works then. You know, and you can watch those videos, you know, where I literally kept making those remarks. But then people were confusing it with under recovering, you know, like new, new uh, lifters were seeing that and thinking, holy shit, you know, like, am I supposed to train and not recover? And I was like, no, motherfucker, <laughs> like. That's, that's sarcasm. And finally, C.T. Fletcher came out in uh, 2013. Obviously, you know, he's been around for a lot longer, but no one knew about, no, no one knew who he was until 2013. I think he made a, a video, came out saying the strongest, strongest man you never heard of or something. And he went viral, right? And he had his philosophy and that he also called it overtraining. It was completely different than nucleus overload. For him, it was more like just training balls to the wall, like two hour workouts, destroying the muscle. So people started thinking that the overtraining that I was referring to was the same thing as his method. Same thing with his protege, Mike Rashid. You know, people thought, oh, you know, uh, uh, the overtraining that these guys are promoting is the same thing as nucleus overload, when it wasn't. And then, of course, that same year, uh, Rich Piana, uh blew up. You know, again, no one knew who he was before then. And he started talking about a strategy called feeder workouts, which is very, very similar to nucleus overload. Uh, the only difference is he was using extremely light weights, way lighter than what I recommend for nucleus overload. And for him, you know, it was just about putting blood into the muscle, right? So it was very similar, but it, it wasn't, you know, really nucleus overload. Uh, so finally, I was like, okay, people are confusing literally, you know, like, I got to come up with a name with this shit. So I was talking to my subscribers, I was talking to my friends, we we're trying to come up with names. And there were the different ideas. The goal was to increase the amount of nuclei in the muscle. So we started brainstorming. And it's fun. I, was I will never forget that night because we were coming up with the most stupidest coniest names nucleus multiplication that was too whack and coney maximum nucleus nucleus accumulation nucleus overload hint hint nucleus surplus nucleus overcharge we're literally brainstorming names going on google typing synonyms of like uh accumulation and multiplication to just look for something that sounded cool enough and finally i was like you know what the best sign they want to me is nucleus overload obviously overload has two meanings right there's overload as in like weight Right, something that's just too heavy, and it's also the word overload, the na you know, the noun, as in um, too much of something. Right, uh, for example, when you say information overload, you don't mean there's a lot of fucking weight of information. You just mean there's too much information. You know, when you say electrical overload or iron overload, it means somebody has too much iron, uh, or, or you see a bunch of cats in cute pictures. You're like, oh look, you know, that's cuteness overload. Or when somebody has too much testosterone, what do we say? We say testosterone overload. So overload is not just weight; it also means excessive amount. Look it up. So that, that led to a huge confusion because everyone thinks that that same study that I literally made a video about is where the name comes from. Because look, it's easy to say, you know, and I, I put the square here, it's easy to say, oh, look, myonuclei uh, acquired by overload exercise precedes. So people are like, oh, look, look, there's the word overload here and there's the word nuclei here. Oh, so that's where you got nuclear overload. Wrong. 
why the hell would I literally show you guys a study and then use keywords from the title to literally create a name and say, oh, look, I coined it. That makes no fucking sense. And for those who don't know, overload exercise is something that scientists use a lot when they're just referring to weight. In fact, I put some pictures here. Look, overload exercise, another one, overload exercise. It's literally something that they use when they're referring to resistance training or usually through, you know, like I said, you know, injuring a rat's leg and or putting something heavy on it. It has nothing to do with, you know, nucleus overload itself, right? And again, the reason why I use the word nucleus instead of nuclei was just because nucleus just sounds better. Like, no one wants to fucking say nuclei. It just fuck, it sounds fucking retarded. So, no, that's not where nucleus overload comes from. Like, literally, I have people tell me, oh, uh, me, oh, Megan, look, is that where nucleus overload comes from? Look, my nuclei are quite... And I'm like, like, do you speak English? <laughs> like, that's that's not even what the sentence is saying. Anyway, so and in fact, if you if you look at the study, you see like it's li they're literally explaining the phenomenon of muscle memory. You know, they're not saying anything about training for thirty days or resetting them to not. All right. So next, another reason why there's the name confusion is because one, the study that I just mentioned. Number two. So when I took a break from YouTube a while. Someone called Greg Knuckles. Believe it or not, I had no idea who the hell this guy was. My subscribers are the ones who send me everything, you know, because I stay away from, from, you guys know me, like, I, I have a big, I really, really don't like the fitness industry. So whenever I'm doing research, it's, it's usually on studies or on animals or biology books, whatever. I stay away from, you know, fitness articles because to me, 90% of my BS. Some some of these guys are good. Some of the researchers are good, like like uh, like Brad, but most of them are avoid. So I had no clue who this guy was. So my subscribers sent this to me. Years ago, and they're like, oh, look, uh, someone made a, an article about nuclear overload, but they didn't give you credit. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So I read the article, right? And it was literally describing every single thing that I, that I researched about nuclear overload, word for fucking word, right? And there's not a single mention of me in there. Now, of course, I'm not the one who actually did the fucking studies. I wasn't the guy in the lab, whatever. But it's, a, it's crazy ironic how the, the person mentioned the mTOR reset, which again was a study that was completely different than the, than the uh, rat study. They mentioned pretty much every single thing. They even mentioned the two to four week, you know, take a break and come back, and you're gonna be resensitized and grow. Like the the title is even grow like a new lifter again, which is literally everything that I've been preaching about nuclear solo. So and and I, and I looked at the study and I was like, what the fuck? Like how do you literally plagiarize somebody's hard ass work? Right. Every time I mention something, you know, I mention a study. I put the link in the description. I mention the person I learned it from. In this article, there's not a single mention of Team Three D Alpha, and I don't care what nobody says. Somebody, some people are like, well, well, Megan, it could have been a coincidence. Maybe they came to the same conclusion you did. And I'm like, really, motherfucker? In 2015, right after nuclear solo went viral, somehow someone coincidentally finds all that research and comes to the very same conclusion. But anyway. I'm going to give the person the benefit of the doubt. Like I said, I don't know that person. I, you know, maybe it was a coincidence. Maybe it wasn't. I find it very unlikely. You guys can go to the website and read that article. It's literally like word for word all the videos that I did in 2011, 2012, and 2013 about nuclear overload. But, you know, benefit of the doubt. And also, the reason why there's a lot of confusion about the name is this fake-ass website. I got to find out who this is. Um, my subscribers send this to me. Again, my stuff send me everything. I'm going to show you guys my, my uh, Facebook fan page, but they literally send me everything they find that's either fishy or, or sometimes just good information. And somebody literally made a nucleus of a little website that I'm not affiliated with. So, guys, if you if you go on this website, that's not me. I'm not affiliated with them. Make sure you don't purchase anything from there. In fact, I'm going to contact that person whenever I get a chance and get this trained out. Nucleus overload is my fucking, I coined that term, trademark. Do not be fooled. But because it's funny how before no one believed it, everyone was bashing it, you know, saying I was an idiot, I don't know what I was talking about. And now that so many studies are backing it up, now everyone is hopping on the bandwagon and literally not even giving credit. The only people who gave credit was my obviously my subs. They were the ones that were, that were with me since day one. When everyone was like, oh, Megan is full of shit, he doesn't know what he's talking about, there's no science behind it. They were the ones who were like, you know what, Megan, there's no science behind it, but, here, you know, here's my story. Here's my story. Everyone was sending me the before and after pictures, uh, the the examples that they read about. A lot of these examples actually came from my subs as well, right? And, of course, Al Alpha Destiny, Alex from Alpha Destiny, he believed it from day one. He even told me. He was like, hey, you know, I used to do mountain climbing, and then when I started bodybuilding, my forearms and my back took off, all that stuff. And, obviously, uh, recently, Scott Herman messaged me. I actually thought this guy was a dick, to be honest. Um, so I, I wasn't even subscribed to him. 
but you know he's actually a cool guy he messaged with me and he was like hey you know I, you know i found a lot of research on your stuff um you know and we went back and forth really cool guy you know and eventually you know he made a video about it went into detail you see so some people in the fitness community still have honor right still have some you know some amount of respect left but some clearly just love plagiarizing but hey the fuck do i know right so that's it guys it's called Nucleus Overload. It's not Nuclear Overload. It's not my Nuclear Overload, right? Don't change the name. I know some people, like, just didn't know. Because, like I said, you know, there's a bunch of fucking, you know, um, scammers and plagiarizers and shit. Um, but it's Nucleus Overload, and I picked that name for a reason. Um, no, it didn't come from, from the title here, right? Like I said, you could actually fact check this if you don't believe me. But it works. If you're natty, if you enhance, there's overwhelming amount of anecdotes. There's way too many before and after results. There's a fuck ton of studies. And now, my, another thing that my subscribers are sending me is uh, they're saying that older era Bible used to do it, right? Um, and I got to do some research on that because, again, like, you guys know me. When I study something, I got to take my time and spend hours, if not days or weeks into it. Um, and I can't find a lot of sources on it. There's one guy who has a YouTube channel, uh, and that's the video that was sent to me. Where he, where he discusses uh, uh, Bronze Era bodybuilders and stuff like that. But that's the only source I could find so far. So I'm hoping that he's actually right. Because like I said, like you, you could go on my channel and watch all the marathon nucleus overload stories that I did. Anything that backs up nucleus overload, I'm down for it. Just send it to me. Send it to me. I'm going to make a video on it. So I got to make I, I got to do some research on that. Because so far, I can't find It's very, very hard to find any information on um, old era bodybuilders. Uh, but... That guy's trying to finance, which I have a lot of videos on that. But like I said, I got to find time to you know, look into it. If that's true, then that literally brings even more evidence to back up nucleus overload. If that's true. And I'm hoping that it's true. And I'm hoping it's not some you know, scam BS. Um, and again, beware of quote-unquote experts, right? Anyone who says that he's an expert, unless they have an open, if they have an open mind, fine. Listen to them, right? That's what, Like I said, you know, I like some experts I listen to, as long as they have an open mind. But anyone who just says, I'm an expert, I know this doesn't matter, and, and they can't back it up. Or they have expert bias where they can't admit that they're wrong. Tell them to fuck off, right? Because now a lot of these motherfuckers, we, you know, we used to say that it didn't work, whatever. Are slowly trying to hop on the bandwagon, right? Get lost. Um, and of course, think for yourself. Don't be afraid to think outside the box, you know. And don't fall and succumb to confirmation bias. Don't look for things that just back up what you want to see. You know, if you guys see the research on nuclear overload, I went everywhere. I looked at, like I said, animals. I looked at people that have bad genetics. I looked at sports. I looked at cancer. I mean, think outside the box, right? That's how you stay ahead of the game. And that's why, if you notice, I was right, right? Science is not only science caught up. It's proving that high reps do work. Occlusion training, obviously, has been around forever. And look, now, years later, almost everybody's doing full body workouts. Almost everybody's preaching more and more frequency. Almost everybody's preaching that volume is more important than just focusing on strength alone. You know, which, like I said, strength is important. Right? Progressive overload is going to happen regardless, right? But volume is the main driver, and I've been saying that for years. So, see, guys, don't be afraid to think for yourself. Eventually, if you have enough evidence or case studies to back up what you believe, eventually the science will catch on. All right, guys, I hope this video helps. All right, guys, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell, and visit my website to grab yourself a copy of my HSP training program. It's a hypertrophy guide, meal plan, macro guide, nutrition guide on top of the program. Everything you need as far as building muscle is in there. Condensed in as few pages as possible. Website is www.team3dalpha.com. Use the 40% off coupon code, which is nucleus overload.